Okay, so welcome to uh, our second podcast where we have uh, Chef Carlos Falcone here with us today. Hi. And uh, this is Seed to Story, where I get firsthand stories from people immersed in the culture and uh, industries of food. So, uh, so what do you go by, Carlos? Yeah, Carlos. So, yeah, Carlos. Uh, Some people like call me by my last name. Uh, it's very uh, usual in Mexico to call people by their last name, but Carlos is fine. Yeah, I want to say Mr. Falcone. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. And chef, uh, whenever like a lot of people call me like chef, you know, but it's like I think the the, the title of chef. Uh, it should be mentioned when people work together, you know? Absolutely. Uh, so That's always felt like it's something that someone gives you when they say chef to you. It's like a gift, yeah. like they respect you as Oh, that. yeah, you gain that respect, you know? Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. Yeah, for you, I'm Carlos. If we one day we work together, and if I gain your respect, I become Chef Carlos for you. So. Sounds fantastic. Uh, so give us, uh, give us a little idea of where you're from, you know, kind of like what your family was like growing up. <laughs> so you want the long story, you want the short story? <laughs> However you feel like you want to, you know, we don't have to take too much time. Uh, uh, so I'm the youngest of seven siblings. Um, nice. Uh, I grew up, I was born and uh, raised in uh, this little town in South uh, Veracruz in Mexico. It's called Coaxacualcos. Uh, and it's a big industrial port, small town, in big industrial port. And uh, um, it's just by the ocean, in the Gulf, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, growing up, uh, kind of learn how to like eat seafood, and uh, so yeah, that's a that's the little town. It's pretty nice, pretty nice and vibrant, and uh, there's a lot of fresh food, and obviously a lot of fresh seafood. That sounds lovely, man. I uh, I ate I grew up uh, eating fresh fish out of rivers here too, so I have a love for that. Oh yeah, I love it. Spoonbill. That's yeah. my favorite though. Nice, nice. So, um, what, uh, why did you decide you wanted to become a chef? Was it because the way you grew up, just eating from the land or? Uh, so, like I was mentioning, you know, um, I'm the youngest of seven siblings mm-hmm. and um, I was four years old when my father died. So my mother ended up with seven kids. And uh, and the way to, uh, for her, the, the only way to, to help these kids and just to uh, look for their future was to cook, uh, and uh, she so she started cooking and selling the food, and uh, everybody started growing up, you know, and we start helping. And uh, me, believe it or not, I was seven years old, and I was like selling food in the streets in Mexico. I was shining shoes too, so everybody contributed to the to the household. Yeah. And but that's how the the passion for food started um, with my mother. You know, my mother's cooking. Oh. Nice. And did you uh, maybe like get a job? Uh, actually, no. Just like, uh, uh, the, and the way we started was like, uh, she would make the food. I get the uh, the pots or buckets or uh, or platters, you know, of food, and just walk the streets in Mexico Man, that's in amazing. that little town. And uh, I was fortunate to come here uh, years later. And uh, like every other immigrant, you know, looking for a better future. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was so lucky to end up in Kansas City. Nice. The um, uh, I, I call it like they call it the city of the fountains. I call it the city of the smiles nice. because everybody you can walk down the street in this town, you know, and most likely I, nine out of ten people will smile at you. I like that. You know, and, like and that. they will talk to you. And uh, absolutely. So and it, that that's just beautiful. And that's why I, I learned to to love the town. You know, so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's why I call myself lucky. So right. Um, what was uh, what was the struggle? For you, like coming to uh, United States, or what was an, like a struggle that you had to overcome? To like, it was like a big one, but you don't have to get too personal if you don't want to. Oh, uh, well, this, I mean, it's like any other immigrant, though, and I don't want to like just be talking about just the, the immigrant part, you know. But uh, it's just a different place. Mm-hmm. At the time, it was just a, a different world for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, 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 and yeah, it was hard. It was hard, you know. You don't speak the language. Um, you look a little bit different. Uh, back in the day, we're talking about like over 20 years for me, mm-hmm. uh, and especially here in Kansas City, um, the diversity it wasn't there yet. Mm-hmm. There was yeah little pockets, you know, of uh, uh, different ethnicities, uh, but not like now. Now it's like we're talking about this is like the real 
America, you know, so mm -hmm. we're very diverse and uh, celebrating. Oh, those yes, of, of course, you know, so yeah, that was one of the, the, the issues too. Mm -hmm. language. It was the food, yeah, shocking, you know, right. And uh, the other things that we have to work, 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 work. Now, was it shocking in a negative way? Oh, no, and, no, no, and no, no, oh, no, in a positive, in, in a positive way. I mean, yeah. I'm not, I'm not a negative person by any means, you know, I'm always, even the bad things, mm -hmm. I always look for the, the nice side, you know, mm -hmm. the bad things, right? Know? So, and I try to make the most of out of everything so yeah yeah absolutely um how has something from like do you i'm sure you still use techniques that you've basically honed since you were very young oh yes and that's like giving you something over you may be a lot of chefs where they they think they want to open up a restaurant you know and but they don't know what it takes to make money for yourself you know in that way um, and you've kind of been able to hone that. What was, uh, uh, what are some of the old techniques that you just love? Uh, so first of all, um, whoever uh, loves cooking the way we do and the way I do, uh, if they try to get into this business <laughs> to try to make money, right. they're in the wrong profession. Trust yeah. me, you know. Uh, I think it, we do this because we love what we do. Mm -hmm. We never think about. Um, the rewards and uh, and like money, you know, like try to get rewarded with money is never. Uh, I don't think it does the. First, it's not the first thing that we, first thing that that we think. Uh, uh -huh. That comes like later. First is because we love what we do. Absolutely. Uh, and when it comes to the yeah. So anyway, so if if there somebody's like out there like looking to get into this business to make money, just better change direction. So when it comes to the techniques, yeah, I mean. Uh, one of the things that we do here, uh, yeah, we do have a blenders, uh, but if we're gonna, we're gonna make a salsa, you know, we use the molcajetes, you know, we use these volcanic uh, pestles and mortars. Right. And, uh, uh, and, and if we're gonna like toast uh, peppers, you know, uh, other places, we put them, they put them in the oven. Here, we got these clay comals, you know, and we, we toast the peppers nice. really slow in clay comals. Uh, and it, when it comes to the tortillas too, you know, we do we go through the nixtamalization process, and uh, we just try to stay honest. And that's what I was talking about honest cooking. You know, uh, we try to do be honest and be real when it comes to the techniques that, that we used to use. Right. We try to keep them alive. Mm -hmm. So, so how do you feel about um, you know a lot of people are like it's it's trendy to be local and organic. Right, but well, a lot, a lot of times people don't understand about seafood. Is there's no seafood in Missouri, you know? <laughs> so, what what's your take on that? So, first of all, you know, it's like uh, for us or for me, growing up in Mexico, um, farm to table, that's an everyday thing. You know, uh, we uh, we don't have a pantries like we do here. Uh, over there, it's like we go to the market every single day. Uh, we do our tortillas every day. We mm -hmm. cook our food. Three, our food t three times a day, you know, so um, everything is fresh. They slaughter a, a, a cow one day and the same day has to be sold, you know, right. and every single day is fresh. And uh, when it comes to like organic stuff, it's like pretty much everything. You just go outside, you just grab some herbs, you know, you grab some chilies, you grab some limes and and uh, especially where I'm from, you know, we are so lucky to have all those things yeah. right there, uh, right outside your door. Yeah. Um, so yeah, farm to table or uh, eating um, organic stuff, it was just the everyday thing. When Absolutely. it comes to fish, uh, one of the things that I do, uh, we try to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. So we try not to deplete the oceans. Uh, and and we, uh, we work really close together with Monterey Bay uh and uh they come here and they visit us and they check on us and make sure that um, that we doing the right thing you know and mm -hmm. because that's what we want to do and, we, and, yeah. and and if we don't know we ask them and they educate us about things you know so if we're gonna get uh farm raised uh stuff you know uh or if we're gonna get like snappers you know we make sure that the the fisheries you know they use like lanes you know uh, lane caught snappers you know uh that they have limits you know it's only thousand fish a day and, and that's it you can uh, uh and when it comes to bycatch 
uh, it has to be utilized. Nothing gets thrown away. So that's, once again, you know, that's how... It's a respect for food. Yeah, oh, of course, you know, and uh, we don't waste anything, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to make the most out of everything that we get here. Nice. So whether it's from like seaweed to fish to crabs, you know, uh, anything, we utilize everything. And here, uh, I haven't get there yet to the bones, you know, but we use them for the skins, guts, I mean, yeah. all the meat, like uh, uh, everything, everything. Right now, we make our own fish styles here. So I guess you're just talking about, you know, like your, how your fish is sustainable. So yeah, I mean, like, uh, we pick uh, the, the fish uh, very strategically. strategically. Uh, we, uh, we don't, we don't buy from uh, fisheries that uh, they do m massive catches, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, small catches, they utilize the um, uh, the not non desirable fish, you know. Right. Uh, we the bite catches, we we utilize all that stuff. They mm -hmm. and we have a, uh, an agreement with the fisheries, you know. If they get hundred pounds of whatever they catch that day, we get all of it. Mm -hmm. So um, nice. So we do, we are. Uh, uh, not obligated, but that's the that's the deal that we have, you know, with right. them to, to utilize everything, and, and and that works for the environment, you know. So um, mm -hmm. we don't use uh, like bluefin tuna anymore. Um, uh, even little things, you know, we're about to ditch uh, straws. Uh, so all those things, I think it helps. And you were you talking know? about how you you've been utilizing the bones. Oh yeah, that's the only thing that we haven't get there yet. But, <laughs> but we use like the guts, you know, when it comes to like the guts of the fish, mm -hmm. we we make our own fish sauce, you know, we right. put them in bottles with salt, with salt and water, you know, mm -hmm. and we ferment it for like several days. And uh, there you go, you, you nice. got your own fish sauce and the skin, you know, uh, mm -hmm. we use a lot of stuff for that. We can make like uh, cracklings with that, or we can make uh, flour. And uh, so nothing goes to waste. So, nice. And uh, I've been like checking to see if I can utilize the bones to make some flowers, just mix it with some other flowers. Mm -hmm. And uh, so nothing goes to waste. So. Nice, man. That's nice. And what about, uh, what about a new technique that you got any new techniques that you're excited about? Or uh, I, I, I don't call it technique, but I, I, one of the things that I really love to do, uh, especially with the food that we bring here, uh, because it's the freshest you can get in the Midwest, you know. Mm -hmm. And some some fruit, some 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 uh, seafood or some food, uh, it, it takes 24 hours, less than 24 hours to get it here from the harvesting time. Right. So it, it, it's not just because we're in the Midwest. It's like the freshest you can get in a lot of places, you know. Right. Whether you're in the coast or not. So mm -hmm. and so one of the things that I like to do is I like to show people the uh, how to be close with nature how to eat it like uh, in uh, the simplest way um, and how beautiful food tastes you know yeah uh, scallops they taste really good if you put like a really nice uh, sauce on top you know right uh, but if you try them raw and with just a little bit of, uh, of in, uh, being invasive you know uh, that's the best that's the nice. best experience so, yeah. um, Get the pure pureness of the fish. Yeah, just like I mean, uh, once again, you know, I just call it being honest. You know, mm -hmm. so this is this is what we offer, and this is how simple can, something can be, but how beautiful at the same time can be. You know. So. Excellent, excellent. I guess your favorite food would be seafood. It is seafood, uh, and I mean Asian when it comes to Asian, and it's not because my wife is Japanese. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I knew Japanese uh, cuisine before the. Uh, but Asian in general, uh, I, I think uh, uh, Asian ingredients and Asian techniques, I think enhances a lot of the, uh, uh, a lot of type of cuisines, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like when it comes to Mexican food and especially uh, the, the things that I do here, you know, uh, if we do in a salsa for, uh, uh, for a, a fried fish, you know, if you add just a little bit of some drops of that fish sauce a little bit of minced uh, crab you know to to that pico de gallo it just like turns into something like uh, so sublime yeah. you know so i always like think uh, i got a, a big respect for asian cuisine and the ingredients once again the techniques that i think uh, if you use utilize that stuff in the right way 
mm -hmm. makes everything more beautiful. I've been fascinated uh, following you on social media about how I've seen how you've uh, mixed these Japanese techniques with like these moles that, that you've oh, made. Oh, yes. And I'm yeah. like, man, I, I can't taste it, but I can like imagine like how amazing that oh, is. You know? Anytime, and, you know, I was like, and uh, we, uh, I'm always open, we're in the, in the process of like setting up a shop with uh, some of the chefs that they want to learn how to make mole. Uh, for me, it's like, uh, they ask me, so, so what is the recipe from? It's like, oh, here, you know, I grew mm -hmm. up with that. Yeah. I grew up in, uh, uh, and I'm so fortunate that all the chefs, you know, they start doing that uh, type of cuisine and they have more respect for Mexican cuisine. Mm -hmm. uh, the moles are like so complex. Yeah. You know, we have seven, seven, uh, seven types. And uh, so far here we've been, we cook five, five types and uh, um, because there's other ingredients that we cannot get in the States and right. that's why we haven't get there yet. So to mm -hmm. cook the seven types of mole. Yeah, I've made, you know, I've been making barbecue sauce for a long time and like when you, tr when you make a traditional, like everything from the garden, barbecue sauce, it's so much like a mole in, in a way, yep. you know, and you're just taking all these herbs and spices and chilies and smoking things, you know, and uh, putting it together into, you know, a sauce. Or yeah, or we're, we're about to launch a, a series of dinners when we do a pre-Hispanic uh, food and uh, handmade tortillas. And it's not the typical tortillas. These are like huge tortillas and they're cooked under um, uh, above fire, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, we using a lot of um, Chapulines, which are there, like the uh, uh, the crickets, you know, uh, ants. We brought some ants uh, from Mexico, uh, Chicatana ants, and uh, we brought some black ants to um, what else? Uh, I mean, uh, worms. Uh, we we're gonna be able to incorporate, you know, and just show people that um, how before the uh, the uh, the colonization of, of Mexico, you know, from the Spaniards, you know, how people used to eat and. How beautiful it can be too, you know. Absolutely. Oh, so, yeah. And the moles too. The moles since I started cooking moles here has been uh, uh, people. We got the acceptance of people, and that's another thing, you know. Like in in my culture, mole, they uh, it's a no no to mix it with seafood. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought it's like yeah, it works. Uh, yeah. But th they're <laughs> so like old school, and they don't want to like be adventurous, you know. It's like if we do chicken or turkey with mole. That's it, you know? We don't right. do anything else. It's like not even with pork. It has to be with chicken or, uh, right. or turkey because those are the biggest staples. For so in a way, you're kind of one. breaking a tradition. Yeah, and way. I'm not the only one. I mean, there's yeah. like so so many other chefs, you Absolutely. know? And, uh, but when it comes to seafood, I think uh, I am. I think I like, it's like a little bit crazy, you know? But yeah. it works, you know? Absolutely. It's like, obviously, you do a black mole with like the with the lobster, you know, lobster tail, so sweet, the meat, and uh, mm -hmm. you get that complexity of the black mole, you know, bitterness, uh, you get that little burn taste, yeah. uh, but at the same time, you know, there's like sweet, there's like chocolate, there's nuttiness, yeah. uh, I mean, there's saltiness, there's a little bit of spiciness, so all those things, uh, I mean, I think if that is like a, the lobster is a complement just to the mole. You know? Absolutely. So uh, <laughs> it, it makes it like way, way better, you know. So. Absolutely. So I guess tell me a little bit about your your restaurant. What, uh, what's the name of your restaurant? Harocho. Mm -hmm. uh, we specialize in seafood. Um, I would say nowadays probably like 95% of seafood. Uh, we bring some stuff. We we do like to, to do like lechons, like baby lambs, uh, rabbit. Um, we do some beef as well. Um, we try to bring some wagyu. Uh, uh, as, every so often you know mm -hmm. as much as we can uh, we bring a lot of seafood from japan we bring a lot of seafood from mexico we use a lot of domestic product too uh, we try to be sustainable as much as we can mm -hmm. and uh, and hopefully fingers crossed one day we're going to be 100 su percent uh, sustainable nice. uh, that's the goal and uh, um, it's just it's work you know we just keep working and we're just gonna keep pushing the envelope and when it comes to cooking, when it comes to, to doing good things. And once again, you know, when it comes to doing honest cooking. Nice, man. So your your restaurant is uh, Harako and how did you- Harocho. 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 Okay. That's how they call people in Veracruz. Okay. Uh, Harochos. Um, people from Kansas, Kansas, you know, so oh, okay. uh, in Veracruz, they call it Harochos. Excellent. That's how, and that's how, how the name nice. started. So. 
And uh, how did you find this location on the boulevard? <laughs> well, I was just driving. Uh, I yeah. mean, I'm not even from this area. You know, I lived many years in Lenexa. I lived uh, uh, some other years, and I think I've been about here 25. Four, about 25, I think. 25, I think. Plus the 25. Nice. And uh, um, the next uh, some years, some years on the plaza, and now we live up north. And uh, I used to come here like every six months. And one day, just like, because I was looking for just an odd location, and I found this little building, and it was closed for many months. And uh, I was like, this is the place that I'm going to open. And nice. uh, it took me like about a couple months to clean it. And um, I just put it together. And we started, by, that was my wife and I. Uh, we started the business a week later she told me she was pregnant and i was like okay now you gotta work harder so <laughs> we just kept going and going and uh, uh belly started getting bigger so is the restaurant you know so is the uh, the crew we start getting more people and more people now we're so proud to to say that we provide jobs for almost 50 people you know with the that's two amazing restaurants. So, that's uh, amazing and and uh, once again you know we I would lie to you if I told you that I got into this business to make money. Uh, I did it because I love what I do, and I'm so fortunate, so lucky, you know, that I got the support of my uh, my wife. Yeah. Uh, Sayaka um, has been a strong, like, strong support for what I do, and um, without her, I don't think I'll be anything. You know, I'll be nothing. That's so, awesome. And so, and th that's how we started the restaurant. And yeah. Oh, don't get me wrong, you know, eventually, yeah, we need to make money. That's yeah. how, because at the end of the day, we're a business, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, the, the, the thing that's driving this this whole machine is love for food. Absolutely. Yeah, and, you know, there's a lot of guys that kind of forget that sometimes. Oh, yeah. You know, they start out being passionate about what they're doing, and then they're like, you know, I need to make more money, and they forget the passion you know and where they came from or you know where their grandfather came from or where their grandmother I, I always yeah. believe that uh, you uh, apply yourself learn a craft and the money will come yeah you know mm -hmm. uh, absolutely so you just try to do the best you can and uh, uh, always in all ways you know mm -hmm. always in all ways so like my philosophy or my motto is like Every day you have to do it faster and you have to do it better. Yeah. Every day faster and better. So you got to try. What, what that I'm trying to say, just try. You know, mm -hmm. it's Absolutely. possible. It is Absolutely. possible. So it's faster and better. That's really inspiring, man. Um, so what are you, you got any future big plans coming up or things you want people to know about? Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, uh, it's, not been, it's not a secret, you know, uh, everybody knows that I, I would love, I, some of my best friends, you know, they, they have business, businesses or they cook on the crossroads mm -hmm. and uh, um, it's a, a very um, unique area mm -hmm. and uh, I've been working on this concept for the longest time uh, to, to bring, um, not just to uh, do another jarocho, I want to bring more of the traditional Mexican food, uh, Mexican cooking um, that we have in my country, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they, we're more than just tacos. Right. We're more than just uh, uh, quesadillas, you know. So right. there is more food. Uh, how like influences what that, when it comes to like Spanish influences, uh, French, you know. Uh, that was something I wanted to ask oh, you yeah. about. Like, uh, how do you? What's the direct correlation for you, like between like the Native American? food and the Spanish um, or French or Japanese influence you know what what do you gravitate towards more you know is that is that is that oh, a native? Uh, it's, no it's just a, a native Mexican that's what yeah. I, that's the base and after that uh, uh, when it comes to the uh, Japanese I just try to enhance the food absolutely With the Japanese techniques or Japanese ingredients you know I just want to make it better and I think it just like sometimes like uh, our food is a little bit rough in the edges, you know, so and if we add some of those ingredients to me, that's my opinion Yeah, I'll bite the bullet for that <laughs> uh, The uh, it, it kind of rounds the food it makes it like Way better our food is Absolutely. really good, but I, I think for what I want to do or for what I'm doing uh, that complements the, the uh, Every single thing that I do and mm -hmm. in a different way, you know, I'm not gonna say that makes it better it just makes it unique. It makes it mine. Mm -hmm. So that's Absolutely. that's how 
that's how it is. And when it comes to like, um, a lot of people don't know that, but we, yes, we do have a lot of big uh, Spanish influence Africans, you know, uh, back yeah. in the day with the colonization, we did have tons of uh, the, uh, slaves that came to, uh, that, that were brought to, to Mexico. And uh, it worked a little bit different than here. Uh, there were those uh, slaves, they were not actually slaves, they were like, uh, they were for a certain time and after that they were uh, they were able to own the land mm -hmm. and uh, um, and so they brought a lot of ingredients and a yeah. lot of techniques so that's how we use the plantains how we use coconut how we use uh, a lot of roots you know so mm -hmm. a lot of stews and and uh, when it comes to the Spaniards you know they refine a little bit more the, the stuff that they were, we were eating um, and so they, they, they start like bringing the nice spices, you know. Right. Uh, uh, we do have a lot of big influence in uh, Asian too, a lot of big Japanese uh, groups and uh, uh, ethnicities, you know, in, in Mexico, mm -hmm. um, Middle East too. I yeah. Mean, uh, big, big Middle East, uh, uh, Turkish. Uh, so it, it's, it's pretty diverse, you know. So, yeah. nice. And that's what it makes the cuisine richer. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot more culture is starting to be celebrated, whether it's because, you know, of current, di you know, uh, situations. But I feel like, you know, the older I've got, the more I've seen the cultures that make the United States what it is, like, really start to be more celebrated because people are fighting for that, you know, and it's amazing, man. We are more than that, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were more than, you know, maybe just burgers and, and potatoes. Oh, yes, you know? yeah. So, yeah, we're, uh, as an American, I, I am an American citizen, you know, so as an American, you know, we are more than that. We are very diverse. That's what it makes us American, you know? <laughs> exactly. Because we were able to, to um, um, I don't know, to mix all those things and just make them better, make makes, uh, uh, dishes or make food ours, you know? Mm -hmm. so that's, uh, getting influences from everybody, you know. So. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, so, if you could be anything, like other than what you're doing now, like in another universe, another dimension, you know, what what would it be? Millionaire. A millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't think I would. If I might be honest, you know, it's like I don't think I will change anything that I that I am right now. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll I will do a lot of things better, you know. Uh, yeah. I will try to uh, not to waste my time when I was young, you know. So <laughs> and uh, just to do, just to work harder. Yeah. And uh, uh, so yeah, just to enjoy more what you do. Um, I think it, it, it's because the age too, you know, it's like. I'm able to enjoy more what I do. Mm -hmm. um, before, it was a job, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, and I always tell people, you know, jobs are really hard as, they, as it is, you know? Yeah. They, that's what they're jobs, you know? That's what they call it work. Mm -hmm. so, but if you love it, and if you enjoy it, it becomes really, really pleasant. Yeah, man, that makes it meaningful. Oh, yeah, it's like, it, it makes it less of a work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I mean, People are always like, oh, you want to be a chef in a hotel? And I'm like, well, I just, might, I guess it's just the situation I'm in, but I, I just love it, yeah. you know? And so I'm happy, you know, so. But um, man, it's really, really great to finally meet you and I look Same. forward to Likewise. some uh, future relationship, yeah. you know? And uh, I want to link back up with a lot of people that I've done podcasts with and, you know, after the summer goes by and get a lot of new ingredients rolling yeah, in. Yeah, definitely, and, you know? Because one of these days when I come, you know, it's like we can just like play with some fish, you know, we can just like see some, some of the process, you know, of the food and how like during the summer, you know, that's when we get bigger mm -hmm. and uh, we bring a, a huge array of seafood, you know, so. Excellent. And, uh, and, and we can just visit the farms, you know, because we, we work with like local farmers really close, you know, uh, we work with them really close. We work with the, like I say, the department of, um, conservation of this air reserve, awesome. you know, so we try to do the, the right thing, you know, Excellent. So a little by little by little. And if uh, if people are looking for you like on social media and stuff oh, like that. Just like uh, Instagram, uh, Chef Carlos Falcon, mm -hmm. uh, or on Facebook, uh, just uh, Harocho. Okay. And and uh, um, our email is harochokc.com, you know, so. That's and what, uh, what are your hours here at the oh. restaurant? 
seven days a week. Uh, there's some days that we close at nine o'clock, a couple days a week. Most of the days are at 10 o'clock at night. We open at 11. Uh, Sunday, we have the crazy brunch, mm-hmm. all the seafood you can eat, you know. Nice. All, uh, we open at 10 o'clock in the morning in, this, uh, in the KCK location. And at the south location, we open at 11 uh, until 3.30. Nice. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, but, uh, if people don't know, this is one of the most crazy brunches you get to eat for uh, here in this location for $24. You get to eat all the oysters you want, shrimp, shrimp uh, ceviches, I mean, uh, you name it. There's like, and you get to try some of those molders that we're talking about. You nice. Know? So we do a couple molders and uh, uh, just to show people, you know, that uh, how, how complex those dishes and beautiful they can be. That's excellent. Thanks for being on my podcast. Oh, really thank appreciate you. It. Thanks for having me, man. And uh, good luck with all your all your endeavors, your business, and thank people. you. Yep. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.